Hey everybody, my name is Wellens and we're checking out Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 today. This is the new game by Frogwares, who previously made The Sinking City. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the week's long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Oh. <laughs> oh at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. As you can see, we're playing a young Sherlock Holmes today. Now, The Sinking City, I thought was a game with some problems, but it also left quite an impression on me, which is why I'm curious to see what this Sherlock Holmes game is going to be like. Of course, since we're playing a Sherlock, there's going to be plenty of detective work. I feel like this young Sherlock kind of looks like a K-pop star or something. <laughs> Apparently, we're here to um, see our mother's grave. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Mmm. -hmm. Sherry, huh? Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Sherlock, don't okay. get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. I look so... For the, for the record, I'm not that familiar with Sherlock Holmes, but I look so aristocratic. Maybe because we're going to a fancy party today. All right. And whose fancy party are we going to? I have a one sleeve up. Don't I look like some kind of like a, I don't know, I feel like I'm in a K-pop music video or something. Right. I thought you were going to lead me. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Sounds good. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. Looks great. Everything looks great. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. And that's, that's Watson? I feel like we kind of gave off the impression that we're a couple or something. We don't even need an extra key. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Hotel. Fancy hotel. But I want to look around first, don't I? <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> hmm. What are y'all doing here? Staff only. Oh, curses. Okay, fine. You win today. We'll check out the main lobby area later on. John? Better hurry up. 
Is this really supposed to be a hotel? It's so fancy. <laughs> oh, look, it's Keanu Reeves. Whoa, what a breathtaking man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are the sharp eyes of a man with a bright mind. Almost like mine. <laughs> oh, you're humble. Nope. Maybe I'm on the other side. This, uh, I don't see 221 here. 225. Hi, everybody. Oh, I can run! Alright, okay, that makes things easier. Although I'm not very dignified when I run, am I? I can't- Oh, they have performers here! Nice, nice. So I guess we're coming here anyway. Sure, why not? I came to party. Not to hide away in my room, doing nothing. Would you like a drink, sir? I most certainly would. Would you like a drink, sir? You're not actually gonna serve me one? <laughs> okay. Well, everyone's very fancy here. I feel like I'm the fanciest, though, even though everyone else is fancy. Maybe it's because I'm a narcissist. 223. 224. I see. 222 and 221. He's sitting right outside my room. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps, oh. in the meantime, you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Perhaps, in the meantime, you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. The foyer? You? If seafood's not to your taste, Everyone loves Benedict's Patch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Hmm. Do we have a map? Or like any details of what's going on here? We do! And just like the Sinking City. And I'm guessing most of Frogwares' games? Roads. Actual road names everywhere. This is still something I've never seen in any other game before. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but right now we're just focusing on the Il Palazzo del Lusso. Mind Palace, A Mother's Love, Casebook. Back to Cordona. I arrived at Cordona, the island where I spent my childhood, accompanied by my only friend, John. It is late evening, but I have a room booked at the Hotel Il Palazzo del Lusso. I simply need to check in with a receptionist. It seems as if I must spend a night here before I can visit my mother's grave. I was welcome, and I will have to spend some time in the foyer. Alright. Okay. I have a wardrobe. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe not now. Bold, black, brilliant. You gel that hair every day? Seems kind of hard to maintain. Incredible Luca Cialici, the friend of spirits, only today. So is there somewhere where I can actually get some food or... Oh. Dark rituals at the graveyard. And so, right after I turned the corner, I saw him. The necromancer. He started to nervously look around, but I quickly hid behind a gravestone. Common sense told me to run, but my duty to you, my readers, was more important than the risk to my own life. Luckily, the vampire did not notice me and continued his devilish ritual. He raised a woman from her grave and ordered her to kill two men who were close by. Then they kissed and made unholy love in her freshly unearthed coffin. Ew! It lasted for hours, but when the moon became low in the sky, they turned into bats and flew away. I managed to obtain a few photographs of the victims. Unfortunately, these were confiscated by the police. <laughs> That's... alright. Yeah, so I'm not sure if there's anything specific 
They want me to be. Oh. Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. Where's my guy? Hey, John. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves oh. Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. So I've spent some time relaxing. Can I go back to my room now? Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Okay. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me? Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. <laughs> All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about oh, God. art is the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. <laughs> Come now, Sherry, what did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. So this is supposed to show how Sherlock became the way he is. He's still kind of like this younger, more maybe arrogant and pretentious version before he gets to the point where he's more measured. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. There aren't that many tables around here. This table, John? Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right, let me take a look. Yeah, this guy. This is a detective tutorial, maybe? No matter how long you stare at the stick, it's not going to walk itself to its owner. Okay, using my extra smart detective vision and powers, I will identify the owner. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The oh. dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Mm. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. But that doesn't necessarily correspond to the person who owns this right now, right? The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. Okay. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Excuse me, have you seen a vain person around here? Pin the evidence with X, and then speak to someone. Try it now with a cane. Right, okay. The cane is this one. 
We also have a table to spend the evening. Meeting the medium. This is pinned right now already. No, now it's pinned. Yes. Yes, yes, I remember this. It's coming back. But we can also go to the medium while we're here. Right, right, right. You can also pin it from the HUD. Can I get rid of the pop-up is what I'm wondering? It's, it's still here. Could you help me? Yes, sir. It'll be an honor to help you. The Lost Cane. There were three people at the table, a couple, and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to find him. Well, we don't have much of a description for the couple. Maybe we can start with the Navy officer. Oh, well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Cue to concentrate and reveal details to identify your target. Some clues won't be visible without you pinning the relevant evidence. Try to find the former Navy officer. So we know he's outside in the garden. Ah! Cordonian cook, friendly, occultist. Swedish noble, lung disease, sympathetic. Oh wow, okay, so we can learn all these things about all these people just based off my observations about them? Interesting. No thoughts on your friend? I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. Kenyan barman, bored. But friendly, because he wants to keep his job. Oh, we've got a lot of fancy people here. Let's see. Now, if I want to find a Navy officer, they're probably not going to be wearing their uniform. So how can I identify them? Oh? Irish secretary, retired military officer. Actor, myopic, affable. Italian actor. English secretary. Yeah, it's gotta be this guy, right? Mr. here. Hello. How, how am I learning this though? Like some of these things you can tell just by looking at somebody, but Greek actor? How did you know that? May I ask you something? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The Navy officer, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with a noble couple. The men talked about yachting, and the lady was fidgeting with a cane. Perhaps she put it aside, and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. <laughs> Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. Okay. Which room is it in again? I guess we'll find it. So we won the bet with John just now because we found the guy on our first try. Which is good, I suppose. It's this room, right? There's a crystal ball here. Oh, when did you walk over here? <laughs> Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. Hmm. Yeah, you see like these little... The game looks great, but there's these little technical things that are like, Whoa, how, how did John just teleport all the way across the room without me seeing him? This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Got your cane. Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered troop any these days. What a gentleman. 
But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Because I looked at you and you looked so handsome that you could be the only owner. Ah, uh, I don't think that's... Wait. Did his wife hit him with a cane? <laughs> that might be part of why. Expensive and new clothes, rich and fashionable. So we learn that he might be aristocratic looking at this. An English noble. And then of course... His ring here. Ah, the garlic. Doesn't wear a wedding ring. Oh. Wasn't he... Oh, his knuckles are all red too. I thought he was with a... Um, a lady. Recently hit someone with force. We just saw it happen. A head of garlic. Red face, expensive new clothes, slightly red knuckles. Judging by the heraldic emblem on his signet ring and cane, I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a noble Englishman in the habit of visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver malady. His florid face indicates that he has succumbed to the temptation to drink a few shots of alcohol. Perhaps he was unsettled by the seance? By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical condition. Already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond, unsurprisingly. Ah, I see. It's alcohol. Because they mentioned the cane earlier, it was a bit dented at the top, so I thought like he was hit with it. <laughs> An ill Englishman on resort. Bored British nobleman. Oh, okay. I can build my own profile of this person. That was just one of the possible choices. Okay. Oh, some of it is different. So we, we know he's Lord Craven in both cases, but this time we say that he's a bored, rich English nobleman who travels around Europe, squandering his money. His florid face indicates he has problems with alcohol. He is still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years' time, he'll be wretched. Being constantly drunk, he has issues with his temper. His red knuckles reveal he has severely beaten at least one person quite recently. His anger issues, mixed with alcohol and contrariety, could make him a violent person. Hmm, depending on what we choose here, it could be right, it could be wrong. Okay, this is, uh, well, Red Knuckles, probably not boxing lessons, but more aggressive behavior. Is what we've chosen. Is it correct? I don't know if we'll find out. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Sherlock is still pretty cocky here. If it's too easy, he doesn't want to do it. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance, but what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. 
Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. That is strange. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. We have a closed room thievery here. Z to highlight interactive areas in the environment. This ability must recharge before it can be used again. Okay, now we know all the objects of interest, which is great because now we won't miss things, hopefully. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details about the world around you. Press Q around little scribbles. Oval groove. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. So not just the medium, but anybody else who was in here? 1.3 inch diameter. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. Blood? Or wine? But probably blood. Half a glass of Baubler scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't get to see it. Ah, oh, I can move around and... Look at the coat. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. And that would be it. All right. My mind palace. Ghosts of the past. Lady Craven faced the window. Oh, during the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was opposite a window to the courtyard, the moth pin. Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. We should speak to the people first. Right, the Mind Palace. This was a thing back in the Sinking City as well. Ooh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. It's okay. Maybe a little bit too much lighting here. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. As far as I'm concerned, you're also a suspect. Anybody who's standing in here is a suspect. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? You? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. Is that because you're a phony and there's actually no spirits here? I will investigate and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. Yeah, okay. Give me a second. I thought there were way more things we could look at, though. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. What? Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Wow, Sherlock. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. Find the stone, yeah, Mr. Holmes, conscious. and quickly. The feebleness of women. Oh, there's more ectoplasm on the ground, too. You can look at this. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. He got violent and started hitting the guy. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. Hmm. 
Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? It adds so much atmosphere to the room. So now we have all the evidence possible. We will look in our casebook here. Seance, thievery, scene. There is a holder where the diamond was. There is a table in the center of the room. There is a cigar butt and whiskey glass on the table. And opposite the window, a glass of wine had been partially spilled. The chair was thrown aside with great force. Lady Craven is barely conscious, unhurt. We can probably talk to her later on. Now we have these facts here. The lady pointed across the table. So she was sitting at the table. The medium, Lord Craven, Lady Craven, they were all sitting at the table and they were holding hands. And then suddenly Lady Craven screamed and pointed at something across. And she faced the window. So she was pointing at something scary outside the window. The courtyard witness. Lady Craven was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. So now this is a clue that we might be able to bring back to the other person standing in the room here. I'll pin this one. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, uh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Would you happen to know anything about it? Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. Okay. Would you happen to know anything about it? I didn't take the diamond, I swear. <laughs> Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. I thought somebody would have known about it. What was that one... A witness. I should check the area and see if there are any traces outside. Okay, so I just want to go outside by myself and have a look then. I don't want to talk to anybody. There you go. Uh, how do I... There's a lot of keys to remember here. <laughs> Recently scratched. Something stuck. This is the bottom of a high heel. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. To track someone's movements, first pin the relevant evidence to the screen, then enter concentration mode with Q to reveal the trail. Sherlock will intuit the approximate path, so stay within the search area. Okay, I have it pinned already. I have Q to reveal the trail. Oh, there we go. They went outside, maybe? Where even are we right now? I don't want to leave concentration mode, but, um... Mmm, there's a shoe. Is this the staff room? Oh. Wait. Could I look at it? Size 4 with a broken heel. That's what we're looking for. Found a broken heel, but this is definitely... the back of the hotel. Yeah. Oh, I can walk all over the um, hotel right now. I'm not just stuck in that one room. Found a broken heel with scratches. Oh, should I continue searching then? They left their shoe here. But it's only one shoe. What happened to the other shoe? Yeah, did you want me to do more with this? I looked at it. Size 4 with a broken heel. Ah! Rose de Moor. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... <sighs> no. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Finding one wearing a size 4? This reminds me of the fairy tale, Sherry. Will you find your princess? No, I'm probably too unlikable and pretentious. Sorry. 
We have to find a maid. Hello, miss. Do you know anything about this? Oh, yes. I can tell you everything, sir. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Wearing common shoes at work? What does that mean exactly? Oh, because her normal work shoes broke. So she's using her other pair right now. Could you help me? Don't be angry, sir, but I truly don't know. Okay, because you're not cleaning the pictures. I'll find you, lady cleaning the pictures. Lady cleaning the pictures. This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. What about this one? With skills like that, this biblical lady could get a job in Scotland Yard. Hmm, she's wearing boots. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? If I say I'm solving a crime, I think she'll get scared. And this option is here anyway, so I think we should use it. I'm a novelist documenting the supernatural and those who witness it now. Should you take a starring role in the tale, I will need your name. Oh my, a book? And you want to include me? I'm Lucia, Lucia Saleta. Something went wrong during the seance, Lucia, but no one will tell me what happened. You would be a valuable interview if you were there. I was, and I saw everything with my own eyes. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a, or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? Mm -hmm. the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. You lied to the poor girl, Sherry. What a tease. She'll dream about being a character of that book. Surely a pleasant dream is better than no dream at all, John. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. <laughs> you guys. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Yes, yes, you guys are so smart. Nobody else could possibly understand any of the things you guys are learning about. <laughs> Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Hmm. Oh, wow. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past. Interact with a node to begin, then recreate an accurate version of events. Here, try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. Okay, well, I know Lady Craven was here. No. Yes, she was pointing at the window and the maid was looking over there. But, um... Hold on, can I look at my hints again? It said something about how the medium guy was... doing something with a ghost. I'm just wondering which side the medium was on. The spirit came from the medium's chest. I'm gonna unpin this for a second. 
The medium Luca doesn't know how the diamond could disappear. Yes, yes. Hmm. The medium is getting smacked in the face here. Makes sense. <gasps> or was it getting smacked here? No, because the chair is broken on this side. Okay, I think this makes sense to me. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Oh! Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Is Lady Craven lying? She was unconscious too, so we couldn't question her. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. Okay. What's her motive though? Because that diamond belongs to them, right? So why hide it and pretend that you don't have it? Well, the maid is gone. To my best student, may your music always resonate on the deepest strings of our souls. Master Anthony. You're just gonna leave your violin here? It's gonna fall down and get broken. Two, two, six. Gossip can help you investigate a case or even discover a new one, so don't hesitate to eavesdrop on people. When you see an ear icon, hold and try to filter out important words from useless chatter. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? What actions by Lady Craven arouse suspicion in the maids? The chef steals food. Can I listen to it first? Lady Craven. Do it again. Say it again. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall. Oh, that's it? Oh, okay. Cannot use a fish knife. Ah. Uh, she's a lady. Why would she need to use a fish knife? I don't think so. Discard it. Was on the lookout. Okay, keep that one. Chef steals food. No. Son's bad acquaintances. No. Okay, we have to do it in the amount of time. I see. Lady Craven is not. Okay, what actions arouse suspicion here? No. Lots of guests this summer was on the lookout. Prices rising again. Son's bad acquaintances made her husband drunk on purpose. That is not it. No, that's not relevant. Cannot use a fish knife? Oh, that's right? Really? <gasps> I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. <gasps> By their observations, she was on the lookout during the evening while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They've also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. Oh, for like, eating? I thought you meant for like, you know, preparing a fish for cooking? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. We've got more stuff in our mind palace now. The moth pin. Lord Craven punched the medium. Seance theft. The diamond was stolen during... Now these aren't related right now, I don't think. Lady Craven. Hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Did you kill her? Oh my god. 
You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You you promised me you would investigate. Okay, you kill investigate her. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You are the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look. After you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici, the medium. And was your mistress there too? Mistress! Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> it seems more probable that you actually just killed her, but okay. I'll pretend that's not the case so far. Is Mr. Galici still being held, and where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225, but that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself, then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. And now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Barely an hour has passed and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? I thought we were going to be done with the diamond, but they've returned it. Or... I think that she probably had the diamond the whole time, but then why did she get murdered? And why did the murderer not take the diamond? That is strange. Ooh, what a... Ooh. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. She looks like she cried. Her makeup is running. It's ugly. <laughs> this must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. It's massive, actually. It's a big piece of diamond. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. Do you think she stole the stone? It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Was that it? The three pieces of evidence? Yes, it was. All right. So young and so dead. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. And of course, we're just gonna have this dead body lying on the bed here. Why even tell the hotel staff? We'll figure it out. Makeup stuff. Fard Rouge Calamel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. I don't have a reflection. I forget all these like little hotkeys. What am I pressing here again? Too shallow, false bottom. Uh -huh. A neat hiding oh. place. Why would she conceal all of this? Stolen jewelry. Jewelry that she wants to keep. Oh! What? Oh, maybe she was conspiring with the medium. Hmm. This ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. Luca had one, the medium. Oh, what does that say? Virtus or Dactus Appet. Courage tastes bold. A unique family motto. That sounds like it's encouraging someone to be a thief. Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past. 
and poor taste. Interesting. I believe we should be able to combine this in the Mind Palace now. The moth pin and the moth ring seem like it's a set. But what does it all mean? Luca and Emma both have jewelry with the same moth design. Could they have something in common? They could have met before. And I feel like if you have matching jewelry, that's probably more than a case of just having met before. But she was already his mistress. Lord Craven's mistress. Oh. Let's ask him about the ring. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? That's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Lord Craven doesn't recognize it. He's certain that he never saw her wearing it. Hidden jewels. I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah, it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Whoa, whoa, I'd be careful with how you talk here. Why, though? She was already his mistress, so wasn't he willing to give her the jewelry already? Why did she steal it? The diamond, maybe not so, because maybe it's a family heirloom or something, but the rest of the jewelry seems generic enough to me. Ordinary cheap brass, weak lock. Remarkably simple lock. Somebody could have come in here. Well, I can't get past it. Where does that even go to? Letter regarding compensation. Lord Craven, you promised me compensation for your gross misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal. Yet I have not received a penny. You know that I lost my job after your false accusations. Now, even after my innocence has been proven, I can't return to work because of my hand injury. If you continue to ignore me, I shall be forced to appeal to the court. Yeah, this guy's not a nice guy. Compensation. A worker. Letter regarding the stolen ring. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the theft investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. We had to free L.O. DuPont, the servant, as we were unable to find any evidence of his participation in the crime. We will inform you of any progress on the case. Yeah, this is when they didn't realize that the woman was the one stealing the jewelry. Someone was not happy with his post. Anger issues. I think that's all the evidence I see here at the moment. Okay. Anything else we can combine? We have a whole bunch of... <sighs> she was strangled to death and she fought for her life. They tried searching. Someone was searching. Okay, it really looks like this guy killed her. Doesn't that make sense? Because he was trying to find the diamond and then like she was... He was searching her bag. The door between the rooms has a cheap lock. Let's go talk to the medium. This is like a double affair. A cheap lock between the rooms. This is a weird layout anyway, like... What the heck? It's right next to the... Is he not here? Pretty sure he was. Oh, we don't have the key. We don't have the key, we have to talk to reception. Excuse me. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. What? All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Wow, you guys are really doing things by the book, huh? Now you're in your element, Sherry. Everybody loves a good murder mystery. We don't want the police getting involved here. 
We can't let them solve our mystery. Hello? Whoa! What the hell? Oh my god. Why are you just sitting on his bed? You always take me to the best of places, Sherry. Damn, this guy's like, maybe maybe it's gonna turn out later on that he's actually on my head. He's not a real person. <laughs> he doesn't even, like, walk around. Hmm. Someone is making the most of his stay. Can you blame the man? I'd say he's not ordering enough. Okay, let's talk to him first. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure the spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. I don't think this guy even knows she's dead. <laughs> yeah, go read a book right in front of me, why don't you? Bleeding nose took a heavy blow. Drawn complexion. Skinny seems malnourished. Poor? Well, he's working as a medium. Scratched wrists. Fresh scrapes. Lightly, slightly bleeding. Ooh. She struggled before she died. Thin, elongated fingers, trained in sleight of hand. Because mediums are... Well, this medium, anyway. He's a trickster. Slight discoloration? Use a lot of makeup. So we have... Former thief became a medium, or the medium is down on his luck. Luca Galici is lean and appears malnourished. His nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. His hands and thin fingers are definitely those of a thief, trained in the delicate work of pickpocketing. He uses makeup to hide possible jail tattoos. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrists from a recent and short fight. I believe he is more a criminal than a medium, and this is his new way of earning money by deceiving the wealthy. Makes sense? Or... He is bleeding, his nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. He uses makeup to hide illness from malnourishment. His hands and thin fingers indicate that he's skilled at conjuring tricks used to manipulate concealed items. He's got scratches from a fight. I think he tries his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well, and he sometimes has to go without food. Well, I think this paragraph gave it away, but the rest of it is not that unreasonable, but this seems more likely. Something, something, Occam's razor. Mm hmm. Jail tattoos. This, I mean, this one could be a bit stretching too far. We're immediately assuming that he's been to jail before. But I do, I do think that he's a criminal swindling the rich. I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. I, I'm not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? I, in fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man. But I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh well, at least I can make the dead talk. With evidence. Well, it's probable that he broke in to next door because the lock is weak. And he might know how to open the lock because he was a thief before. But why though? Because he didn't take the diamond. That's the weird part. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. 
Savage servants, all right. Let's show him the ring. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. Really? This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. Really? A misunderstanding, huh? Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Lord Craven punched the medium. Okay, Luca and Lord Craven were neighbors. Basically, what I want to do right now is say... Let's see. The thief had stolen from Lord Craven on his trip was setting up the servants to cover their tracks. Emma was stealing alongside the medium. Uh, I think we roughly know what we want to say. We just got to figure out which ones match together. Maybe look around the room first. There's more. Do you always travel with your books, Mr. Galici? I do. In my line of work, one needs resources available to help deal with the unpredictable and unworldly. So Emma was a thief. This guy was a thief. They were both thieves. Letter of invitation. Dear Luca, I hope you will have time to visit our estate and perform another seance. Since I was last able to speak to my husband through you, I feel that my life has changed completely. I cannot wait until I can speak to him again. I am anxious for you to visit. Sincerely yours, Countess Lamour. Tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Or... Or weapons and defenses against visitors from the great beyond. Maybe he really isn't here. People don't seem to react to John. Well, all right. This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. So this is the door that goes to the other room. Hmm. Luke, Luca, and Lord Craven were neighbors. Yes, I just combined it with the one where the lock could be easily picked, I think. Luca could easily pick the lock. The lock between the two hotel rooms was weak. Luca could easily pick it. This is a different screen. Hmm. I think we have more. Fresh scratches. Emma was strangled. Emma left the scratches on Luca's hands while fighting for her life. By the way, I'm pretty sure it's possible to get the wrong deductions. Like, this is based off what I think right now, but there's some room for you to get it wrong. Like the profiles of the people earlier. I don't know what happens if you get it wrong, though. The diamond was beside Emma. Yeah, see, this is according to what Luca said, which I feel like is probably a lie. The thief framed the servants. Wait, what's this one about? The thief that had stolen from Lord Craven on his trip was setting up the servants to cover their tracks. Emma was stealing. Emma had a history of deceit. Emma was a thief, but made Lord Craven believe the servants were stealing. She'd done it throughout their trip. Oh. Luca could know Emma was a thief. If their paths had crossed in the past, Luca could well know of Emma's predilection for thievery. Oh, maybe the moth ring could be some kind of like a thievery symbol for them to meet each other. Seance theft, the diamond was beside Emma. Oh, I get the oh, here we go. We can decide. The murderer left the diamond. Whoever killed Emma left the diamond beside her body. Or Lord Craven caught Emma with a stone. Lord Craven returned to the room just as Emma was hiding the diamond and caught her off guard. This seems more likely to me. This one, is it saying that the murderer had the diamond but they placed it next to Emma? Or is it saying that the murderer killed Emma who had the diamond and they just happened to leave the diamond next to her? This one is not... I'll pick one for now, but um, we can pick it again. 
depending on the other stuff that we find. Lord Craven punched the medium. Could Lord Craven have seen Luca? No. Rough servants, compensation for abuse. I'm guessing a little bit here. Lord Craven punched the medium. No, this might be it. Oh. Lord Craven can't control his temper. We know this. Lord Craven is an unstable man. And if he caught Emma with a stone, he would have killed her. Right, so I think we're deciding between Luca and Lord Craven right now. Which one is really the killer here? We, we only have three here, so I think we're missing one clue somewhere still, at the minimum. The truth enraged Lord Craven. Lord Craven was furious when he discovered that Emma had stolen from him. Well, Lord Craven says he was at the bar. He didn't come back with Emma, which kind of doesn't make sense to me, especially since she just fainted. Yeah, we need another clue. This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm oh, it. There's one more here. A familiar substance. It's the ectoplasm that stained the seance table, but this time, there's enough for analysis. Mmm. Well, we're really gonna do chemical analysis right here? Ectoplasm sample. What? Wait, what am I trying to do here? Chemical analysis, create the target formula on the right. Drag out two reagents. Drag out an operation. Link the reagents to an operation. Combine so the result matches the target formula. Link your result to the target formula. Uh, okay, let, let's see. Okay, so this is the final result. We want this thingy, three, and the triangle, two. Triangle two. Link it. What? On Earth is happening. So we have three and two already, but how do I like... Hold to link. Did I link it? No, I think I need these things, right? Oh my god. Oh, okay. Two two thingies add together to make this thingy. No. Link your result to the target formula. Link it. Yes. Oh. What is it? The reaction shows it as rubber latex mixed with phosphorus. As much as this chemical element is dangerous to hold in the mouth, I am quite disappointed. I expected something trickier. It is a dangerous chemical to hold in the mouth? Is that relevant for me? This one I feel like is not... Hmm. Happy youth. Piece of common jewelry. Well, we only have one more here. What about our current mind palace though? Or uh, where, where is the other place? The Duxions. We're still missing one thing here. Oh, we didn't choose it! Luca's scratches were left by servants. Or Emma scratched Luca. I feel like this is more likely. A servant's manhandling a guest? It just seems unlikely. But if you're saying that, then... Like, I can't say they both killed Emma at the same time. If I say that Lord Craven didn't kill her, and that the killer just left the diamond there, then I have a new conclusion. Luca could know Emma set him up. The medium Luca Galici could have known that Emma was a thief and that she was trying to frame him for her crime. Okay. Luca Galici is the murderer. Emma tried to frame Luca, the medium, for her theft of the diamond. In revenge, he killed her. Bring Luca to justice. Luca Galici is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing Emma, even though he could have just told the police everything. 
or help Luca escape. Luca fought for his life. Given his checkered past, if he were arrested, nothing could save him from a death sentence, and Emma knew it. I will not stop him from fleeing to start a new life. This is what we can possibly choose. I don't really feel like giving him... Let's see. If I say that Luca's scratches were left by the servants, and that Lord Craven was the one who killed Emma, the truth enraged Lord Craven. But we don't have a next one. Yeah, I think we need another one to come to the conclusion here, which we don't have right now because I probably missed it somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. My faith in this medium has burst, just like a rubber balloon. Ah, we can talk to Luca again. We can give him the sample, I guess? Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the <laughs> dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. I need to go. Was that actually a, a clue or are we just talking to him about how... Is that relevant though? Because... Yeah. Emma wasn't... She didn't have poison in her mouth. She was strangled. Hmm. So I did walk around and I wasn't able to find another one, which I feel like we should be able to because if we don't, then we can't accuse Lord Craven. Yeah. What happens if I accuse you? Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... <sighs> I don't know how you figured it out. But yes... I killed her. I had to. Mm. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink, all I suffered while she indulged, and I grabbed her throat. I can understand your reasoning and where you came from, but I don't think it changes that you actually did murder a person. She was a horrible person, but you murdered her. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not, you'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. We'll meet again, Holmes. 
I will get you, in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. Well, I guess we solved it. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything, even murder, and then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous hmm. existence, thank you very much. Is he imaginary? I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, <sighs> damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. Okay, well, we solved it. If I remember right, back in the Sinking City, solving the Mind Palace was crucial to actually solving the case, but here, I kind of left it undone, I guess because it was more a way for me to um, organize my own thoughts. I still feel like I missed a clue somewhere, so I couldn't accuse Lord Craven even if I wanted to, but hey, it just goes to show that even if we're not certain of the contextual clues we have, we can always interrogate someone until they give it up, until they just confess themselves. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I truly believe Sherry can never be mistaken. I'm so proud to be by his side. Sherry and I make a good sleuthing team. He eavesdrops, I sit around and wait for him to finish. Never fails. Saluka so killed the lady, and I'm not entirely sure I blame him. It's up to the police now, but to me, Craven seems more despicable. Yeah. I think that bit is alluding to how, even though Luca might have been the one who killed her, Lord Craven might have been the worst person because he was violent and alcoholic and beat people around him and all that. Which goes back to back in the beginning when the guy was saying, oh, truth is subjective. Because yeah, it's true that Luca murdered the person, but was it correct to tell the police about him? Because he did suffer a lot and there's a little bit of um, a moral question there, I guess. Lord Craven is horrible, but he really didn't kill Emma in this case, is what it seems. So, is it okay to be using this chance to frame him for something else too? These might be the kind of things that young Sherlock Holmes is gonna start questioning. But in the very beginning here, he's like, oh nonsense, truth is objective. So I feel like he definitely would have picked to just hand in the murderer. Because we're looking at someone who got murdered, and we found the murderer, and therefore, truth is very clear-cut, and that's it. Sherry, I forbid you to spend another night here. The hotel's reputation won't survive a second investigation. <laughs> we'll find another hotel. Okay, so this was the first case in Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. By the way, to my understanding, Chapter 1 is just talking about how this game explores the young Sherlock Holmes, his origins, not that this is an episodic game. This is a full standalone game, which I feel like, I personally feel like they've shot themselves in the foot with SEO-wise and like just game perception-wise, because chapter one is a very misleading term. But anyway, my initial impressions so far are that it's very, very similar to The Sinking City, to the point that it feels a little bit like a reskin, because some of the, um, a lot of the mechanics are basically the same. The whole Mind Palace part, uh, reconstructing the crime scene and tracking, and I guess if you're building a detective game, it's really hard to wander away from these things, but I feel like maybe it's a little bit too similar. Now, I don't really, I don't have any experience with the other Frogwares games. The only one I've played is The Sinking City, which is to say that the detective mechanics do leave some impression because I feel like it goes a little bit deeper than most detective games. Surprisingly, making a detective game is not as easy as it looks because how do you make sure that the player is really deducing all these things and not just choosing a multiple answer on the screen? From that perspective, it does leave an impression, but technically, 
when we were looking for clues, like talking to the Navy officer or the maid, they made the clue pop up in the screen of text as opposed to having them say it. They just said a generic line like, oh, here's a clue you're looking for, which I guess helps with cutting costs and budgeting and all that, but it does feel less immersive, and that's the overall impression I have with the Sinking City as well. Interesting detective mechanics, but technically maybe showing their limitations here and there. So far in the entire hotel, the only person who dynamically walks is myself, and everyone else just sort of teleports to where they need to be. For John, at first I thought it might have been like a technical issue, but John might be imaginary. In fact, I'm pretty sure he is, based on the things that he's been saying. But even just people like um, the, the guests traveling to their hotel rooms, we don't get to see that happening, it just happens. So these are little things here and there that don't make the world feel as immersive. What did you think of the game? Did you like it so far? Did you not like it? What did you like and not like specifically? Feel free to let me know in the comments. And with that said, this was the first look of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 with Wellens. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing it, and I will see you all in another place, in another time. Bye!